Hey guys, as I was, I was recently putting the finishing touches on our chainsaw head-to-head -head video, and I started thinking about how far battery technology has come since I've personally started using cordless tools. I started with a slide pack Makita. Uh, that stream of thought brought me down a rabbit hole to start thinking about the landscaping industry and how it's now experiencing an increased focus on the integration of battery operated equipment across the job site. With this shift has come a continued development in advanced technology, driving discussions of gas tools versus battery power tools. And so this is not a tool review. This is more of an editorial. It's my hope that I stimulate some conversation between you guys and comments on the video about the future of battery power tools and battery technology and outdoor power equipment. Performance, power, and runtime. In order to have, or in order for us to have this kind of conversation, we need to agree that battery tools need to match gas in performance, power, and runtime, right? Um, when I think about performance, power, and runtime, we're now at a time in our lives, basically, where cordless tool technology, the batteries, they're as powerful as corded tools and probably as powerful as gas power tools. For example, Milwaukee Power Tools came in tops, took number one in our last top handle uh, chainsaw head to head. They started launching outdoor power equipment in 2017, a couple of tools, and now, uh, oh, I guess they started ramping up in 2021 when they came out with that uh, powered battery powered mower. And fast forward to today, 2023, it's clear they're making a huge push towards OPE, outdoor power equipment. They have over two dozen tools, several chainsaws, top handle, 14 inch, 16 inch, um, the dual battery blower that I have, 21 inch self-propelled mower. They've got the M18 hatchet and the eight inch pruning saw, awesome tool, by the way. They've got a brush cutter, a string cutter, eight and 18 inch hedge trimmers one and two gallon sprayers, including that four switch tank gallon backpack spray thing they have. And my favorite is their quick lock system where the quick lock power head and the attachment system that I personally have and use. And it's, uh, it's like a little chainsaw, a string trimmer, edge, hedge trimmer, edger, gas tr uh, trimmer and extension pole. I love it because it's an all in one system. And as a homeowner, I use it all around my house. Do you guys see where I'm going with this though? None of this stuff was available five or six years ago. But here we are with the ability to buy tools that can absolutely cut the cord from electricity and even get work done without gas power. So gas to battery trends. The next question we need to talk about is, okay, Milwaukee and all these other power tool companies are making cordless tools for outdoor power equipment, but are they powerful enough for a pro landscaper or an arborist to transition from their gas to power battery power tools in their industry? We'd be foolish to think that power tool companies are not at least trying to achieve this. I, we know that, especially when we see the news on the, is on the increase in requirements to enforce emission-free and low noise equipment in say, municipalities and homeowner associations, hospitals, resorts, business places, in an effort to curb that noise and air pollution. The trend has encouraged power tool brands to expand their product lineups, especially in OPE. So to stay ahead of the trend, as a pro landscape or arborist, somebody like that, looking to stay ahead of the trend, they're gonna have to explore alternatives to their gas powered products as time goes on. And I think they should start now. Battery operated equipment is the obvious solution here and they've already introduced solutions that are fully compliant with these emerging reg regulations. But when, we, um, when operating in non-regulated areas, you know, trends away from gas continue to grow as battery powered alternatives create substantially less noise, output zero emissions, allows landscapers maybe to start work earlier, work a little later, avoid their workers from the fumes, whatever, this, this pros to that. But let's not forget the popular arguments for using batteries over gas. Obviously less noise, uh, way easier to use, just start it up, no pull, less maintenance, right? Gas, spark plugs, oil. So what do landscapers, pro landscapers, need to consider before adopting battery powered equipment? Well, there's cost, there's power, there's runtime, right? Uh, there's recharging capabilities, and we can even throw in their same battery platform. And let's throw in cost again, because they're pricey. Probably one of the biggest issues facing professional landscapers and arborists is cost. Investing in a battery powered equipment is expensive, especially if you're doing it all at one time. And I think 
That's why I think they should do things incrementally a little at a time. The ROI is just not there to jump in with all of it. I think pros need to slowly integrate battery tools, you know, just across their arsenal to keep their costs down. This is one area where I think pro contractors and landscapers need to consider looking at a manufacturer that can offer, say, a single battery platform to get all the work done they need. By investing in a single battery platform with, say, an interchangeable battery system or a landscape, uh, landscape maintenance companies, they can save money right off the bat and long term on tools and gas. Um, you know, you're using the tools as power tools, but you're also using them as OPE. So I think that's a win. All right, let's, let's talk a little bit about cost of ownership. I don't think this is discussed enough with guys that debate this stuff. It's no secret that electric equipment, batteries, they're, they're more expensive than gas powered tools. This is primarily due to the cost that the batteries are so expensive. But I look at the batteries as kind of like you're prepaying for, for fuel. It's like the battery is 300 tanks of gas. Yes, there's a higher upfront purchase price on battery tools, but that's the, not the only fact you need to consider. There's also facility infrastructure concerns to ensure the capabilities of charging, ca charging capacity, and mobile charging. A pro landscaper I know recently compared cost of ownership between gas and battery zero turn mowers. And this is fascinating. He determined that over a five year period, the ZT mower, the battery ZT mower, was approximately $500 cheaper to operate and took approximately 2,500 hours to break even on his investment. Now, for that comparison, he looked at costs and credits and did that side-by-side -side calculation. Some of the things that he looked at, he compared purchase price, and battery is sometimes three times more uh, for a ZT mower, infrastructure upgrades and charging, uh, incentives, maybe some tax incentives for using battery and charging and electric, there's loan costs, fuel costs, cost of repair and maintenance, gas, oil, spark plugs, tax depreciation on infrastructure and the tools, and life of the tool. So that answered the question that electricity, hey, it's cheaper than gas. The biggest drawback for battery tools is and always has been runtime and charging. Now, the future of charging. I think that's where a lot of this is going. This is the biggest hurdle for battery power tool companies. Runtime has always been an issue with cordless tools. In order to get the job done throughout the day, you either need to have enough batteries to get the work done, which is expensive, um, or you need to be charging throughout the day, mobile charging. So, and I think that's probably the answer. Charging cordless tool batteries is easy if you're a contractor like me and you're parked at a job site with electricity all day, but when you're a mobile contractor, like a professional landscaper, it's way harder and more expensive. To make charging efficient for mobile crews, pros need to make it happen on the go meaning they need to take their power with them or charge as they go. So solar charging systems, some people got to comment on that, it's not reliable, affordable, or efficient enough uh, or cheap enough for mobile options right now. Uh, pros need to look at large battery storage systems or inverters. And many pros utilize battery inverters now in their trucks and stuff. And, and these units cost around a dollar per watt to operate chargers in the field. Um, that's viable. I think the next evolution will be battery storage systems. And this is, this is where the big innovation in cordless tools for outdoor power equipment will come from, I think. Tool companies will be looking at solutions to charge batteries on the go from a bigger battery. Some companies like Cress with their cyber tank system, they're already doing it and it's pricey. I think that thing is 10 grand or something to buy. Tool companies will need to offer large battery storage systems that are capable of recharging multiple batteries on the go throughout the day. Now these units, they're gonna be big, heavy, most likely mounted to trailers and trucks. Um, they will need to be robust, waterproof, inverter capable, have GPS location for theft, um, and be able to recharge batteries fast. When I say fast, I mean like 10 or 15 minutes fast. For example, a landscaper might finish a lawn and charge between the next property. I don't know, something like that. Think about recharging electric cars. It's kind of similar principle. Um, these battery systems will be designed to charge at night like a car off your 110 voltage maybe, and pros can then charge or use that larger battery to charge their smaller batteries, DC to DC fast charging during the day. Um, but that means we need better batteries. And I think for, for this to be viable, tool companies, power tool companies need to rethink the battery recharging cycle life. In this scenario, landscape pros, they're gonna be discharging and charging batteries fast and often. Battery cycles add up fast and then die, right? 
So battery longevity needs to be longer. And to do this, they're gonna have to increase the recharge cycles to, I don't know, something like 3,000 or something more for pro users. Maybe it's a pro battery. I don't know. Let's talk a little bit about all tools in one battery, right? So we talked a little bit about same battery platforms earlier and tools, and it's appealing to a lot of contractors. There's a ton of OPE companies like Greenworks and Toro Ego. They're doing this. Many power tool companies like DeWalt, Makita, and Milwaukee are doing it as well. Now, Milwaukee, for example, they've got like 250 tools on their M18 battery platform and 125 on their M12 system. By purchasing tools from a single brand with an interchangeable battery system, businesses can maximize runtime, versatility, and operation, and increases their efficiency in applications. For users in the M18 platform, for example, this provides compatibility between outdoor products as well as common power tools. That's what I do at my house. In considering the shift away from traditional gas solutions, landscapers have to consider the versatility, the efficiency, and power provided by battery power technology to best maximize that long-term investment. So I guess to conclude, I think the benefit of cordless technology is real, and especially for outdoor power equipment, it's obvious, but it still comes down to runtime and power. Can these tools provide the power needed to get the job done with enough runtime when the professional landscaper or arborist to get it done, right? I believe it can, I believe they can do this. But I think recharging and upfitting costs will be their biggest hurdles. The growing innovation with outdoor power tools, battery power technology, it's going to allow the equipment to outperform gas solutions and it's gonna meet the needs of the professional, no doubt. But as a landscape maintenance companies, professionals in, the, in that field, they need to look at making these purchase decisions and maybe consider opting out or adopting a long-term plan, like slowly adopting the battery powered technology, uh, as opposed to trying to do it all at one time. Because I think, I think the cost is just gonna be prohibitive, which is unfortunate. So guys, that's it. This was my, uh, my rant on battery versus gas. I really, really hope that you guys have something to say on it. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video, and please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell right there. When you do, it lets you know when we uh, publish a video and you get a notification. Thanks a lot and we'll see you next time. Take care.